Welcome to Mr. UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I am Kyle, your host. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Bet Review Show for UFC Fight Night 135, Justin Gaethje versus James Vick. We're going to get into the two plays that we have in this card, as of course our best bet as well, and just our overall feeling on the card. Uh, before we really dive into um, the two plays that we had, want to go over the main event. I mean, what a main event it was, the hype behind it, the, the, the bad blood, everything that was going on between these two guys. It was very interesting to see how it was going to be panning out. And, you know, the, you know, the, the Homer Simpson lines that were coming from, uh, you know, Vic about Justin Gaethje and uh, as well as talking to him that he was uh, punch drunk already and he's young in his career and our young guy and, and he was punch drunk already. So there was a lot of great lines coming out of Vic, I got to say, and the confidence level was very high. Um, and even my analysis going into this, I did not have a bet on this fight, but I was very interested to see how it was going to be panning out. And for me, really, the big difference was either going to be Justin Gaethje using his leg kicks, using those combinations, and possibly even wrestling was maybe an opportunity for him, although he doesn't seem to really use it at all, and he's very good at it. Um, and with Vic, it was more using his length, using those kicks, using those front kicks to kind of push away uh, Gaethje, not allowing him on the inside, letting him use his range. And that was really why I stayed away from this fight, because it just seemed very hard um, to really look at and to handicap one way or the other, in my opinion. So going into it, obviously, we all know what happened, but going into it, I mean, really starting out, I think, although it was a short fight, I think Vic was doing what he wanted to do. I think he was giving the distance. I think that he was allowing himself to move around the cage. The one thing that he was doing right away it was something actually that Gaethje talked about. Gaethje said, you know what, if he's going to continually back up, if he's going to continually push himself up against the cage, that's going to really help Justin Gaethje. So that's exactly how this ended up happening, which is pretty, pretty ironic the way that he pretty much called it. And push him up against the cage, kept throwing that over, that over uh, I think it was right hand, the overhand right, kept trying to throw that, you know, really setting up the jab with the overhand right to get over um, that, that distance, that, that really is going to be tough for any guy to overcome a guy that's 6'3 in that division. Gaethje lands a beautiful overhand, puts away and knocks out cold Vic. And the way the fact that not only did he knock him out, but I mean, there were points where after the fight, Vic had no idea where he was. I mean, even after the fact of he was knocked out, he needed help to, to sit back down. And then you've got uh, Gaethje came over, and actually, he, you know, I, I give him credit after all the abuse that he was taking. Um, and Vic's, and Gaethje's a tough guy, so it's not like he he, uh, he can't handle it. But after all the, the, the verbal, verbal altercations with these two guys, he comes over and Vic is sitting, I don't know if you guys had, had caught it, he was sitting on, uh, Vic sitting on the, on the stool, Gaethje comes over to, to actually just kind of, you know, hey, you know, you know, good fight, you know, whatever kind of thing, and Vic actually looked to take him down, Vic actually was reaching for his legs to cut, and they all started pulling him back, and they're like, this guy, this guy's mind is somewhere else, he is just, he's in La La Land at this point, this guy, so, ends up knocking him out, Gaethje gets the victory. Now they're talking about Gaethje fighting Kevin Lee as a possibility. I think that's a fantastic fight. Would love to see that happen. Um, you know, and 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 then even Gaethje called out Tony Ferguson. So I'm not. I don't believe that will happen. Where Tony Ferguson is, you know, in, in his career, where he's knocking on the door of fighting possibly the, you know, you know, maybe the winner of um, even uh, Connor and Khabib. So there's a lot of moving parts there, but crazy main event that, you know, we thought we were going to see this outright war and it was, po and we were all looking at possibly a knockout, but Gagey gets the job done. Quick knockout for him. So he gets the victory. So now we will get into the bet review for our best bet play. Our best bet play was on Michael Johnson uh, against Andre Feely. We had two units on Michael Johnson to win this fight. Now going into this fight here, the big thing for me was, was Feely going to be taking him down? Was it going to be something again that Michael Johnson, you know, he comes surging in that first round. He, he comes out swinging. He has a lot of power. And then he just tails off. And he's able to not really do much later in fights or he gets finished later in fights. So it's something that I liked. We talked about again at the prediction show that his energy management was going to be critical in this fight. Completely he needed to manage his energy, not going in there and looking for those heavy shots. And then not having the power or energy to really go through the next few rounds. So it was going to be a tough situation to see how it was going to go. But in this fight here, first round, I think... 
was pretty close. You know, you know, early on that round, they were both landing, they were both throwing shots, and you know, you know, both of them had some, you know, a couple, you know, it was a head kick, I think, by Feely, and, and then Michael Johnson landed some great combinations. But I think the thing that people, you know, and people talked about, some people said, oh my God, you know, Feely won this fight. Some people said, oh my God, uh, Michael Johnson won this fight. So it was, but obviously when you go to judges, anything's possible. But in that first round, in my opinion, and I'll give you my breakdown per round here, in that first round, I think, was outright Michael Johnson. I don't think there was anything else questionable about it. I mean, you look at significant strikes. In the first round, was 48-17 to 17 in Michael Johnson's favor. That's a pretty wide range for a first round of significant strikes. And where there was no takedowns, there was no really highlight, real shot, there was no, no one really got, you know, stunned or rocked, which could sway things, of course. But 17 <coughs> landed shots in a round for Feely is not going to win you the round when the other guys landed almost 50. So in my opinion there, Michael Johnson gets that first round. So going into that into that second round, I liked the way it was headed. And I liked the way that Michael Johnson fought. And that was where I was really hoping we would see going into this fight. I was hoping to see that Michael Johnson wouldn't come out swinging. I mean, if you really go back, and again, we talked about it, you know, his last three fights... Those early, he is swinging for the fences. He's looking for that knockout. He's looking, and then a couple, you know, he has got, he knocked out Poirier in, in pretty uh, impressive fashion. But after that, he just, he, he's allowing himself to be taken down. And that was the big question mark here. So now going to that second round, it literally was deja vu. Because, you know, he goes into the second round. They're both landing some shots. Johnson's very active. Even Feely was pretty active in there too. Both back and forth, back and forth. But the takedown. Right when I saw that takedown and Feely gets his back, I said, well, this is, this is the exact situation that I did not want to be in. Into the second round, worrying about Michael Johnson and would he be taken down. And how he's going to be able to manipulate himself to get back up in such a, type, in a tough spot. And Feely has credentials to be on the ground. And there's no doubt about it. I like Michael Johnson being a little more well-rounded with the striking compared to um, uh, Feely's. But when he got into the ground, it was all bets are off at that point. I said, you know what? This is, this is, this is not good news uh, for our best bet play. But, you know, there was po – and especially when he got his back, rolled him over, Johnson was standing up. And I said, what is going on here? This is going to tire them probably both out. But there was nowhere really to go for Michael Johnson. And once he fell to the ground, Feely was this close to really getting his arms under there. But the way Michael Johnson fighting the hands, defending the hands, moving around, was able to slip out of that. And I thought that was extremely impressive for him. I mean, he even talked about it in the, uh, the after show, um, the post show. Michael Johnson said, as soon as he had my back, I said, this is, this is literally keeps happening to me. And what am I doing wrong? And I guess hopefully it seemed like he corrected it. So into that second round, it ended up being, um, uh, you know, I, I, you got to give it to Feely. Second round, you got to give it to Feely. The, um, uh, and, into, and actually uh, in the middle of that third round, they actually flashed um, the statistics. And I was actually more shocked. Again, it was 48, 17 significant strikes. And then in that second round, it was, um, uh, I think it was, it was very close. It was a hundred and... It was like 100 and, and uh, you know, 107 to like in the 90s for Feely. So it was very close in that second round significant strikes. But the takedown, the, the submission attempt obviously goes to Feely. So Feely ends up uh, winning that second round. Now you go to the third. And to, in my opinion, it was 1-1 going into this. And I really thought it was that third round was easy for Michael Johnson. He was much more active. He was landing more. He had more highlight reel shots. I would say highlight reel. Maybe that's, maybe that's a little too strong. But he had more of the more significant strikes that was doing more damage. And I thought that Feely was attempting to go some takedowns there. I don't think he did enough. And I thought that if Feely could take him down one time in that, you know, and, and, and not just take him down and he bounces back up, he really needed to do some damage. And he did not do that in the third round. Michael Johnson does enough to pull away, to have more strikes, more active, more landed, gets us the victory, very close in a split decision victory. So we do get that victory of Michael Johnson, cash in some tickets, we will take it. Um, that now brings our best bet to 22 wins. 10 losses plus 18.78 units for the year. So we're at that 69 percentile winning on our best bet play. Back uh, right at that 70% mark, like I said. Want to push forward. I want to get to that 75. I mean, 80 almost seems, you know, 80 is almost impossible in the betting world on, uh, on uh, your, your, your strongest play. But we're right now at that 70 mark. Really happy where we're going right now. So that was that play. Won our best bet play. And then very, very quickly, not much to really talk about. Our other play that we had was Courtney Casey, a half a unit, 
um, versus Angela Hill. Uh, Courtney Casey was plus 110, and some of the things we quickly talked about, it was just her length. She wish she could be able to dictate a little bit more of the cage movement, body movement, and not allow Angela Hill to get inside and really cause too much damage. Very close fight, but... You know, obviously it went, it was a pretty much a clean sweep for uh, Courtney Casey. So we do get that victory there on our happy unit. So, you know, went 2-0 last night, uh, um, hit, or two nights ago, I should say now. We hit uh, Courtney Casey, we hit our best bet on Michael Johnson, had them both parlayed, and as well as uh, did hit some nice bets down with, uh, with Downhill uh, on our uh, uh, prediction video. We had some comments back and forth. We were basically talking the entire time. Awesome conversation. We were, he was nailing some fantastic picks. We were going back and forth, so more props to him on some awesome calls. So I invite all of you to our next video. Uh, our prediction video will be um, the week of September 8th, which is coming up in two weeks, and that is UFC 228 Woodley versus Till. So we're going to get into all of that the week of the fight. We will have a Let's Chat video, and again, I invite all of you to have conversations. I am very active. I answer all comments and want to continue to have these comments because of the reason, like I always say, not everybody knows everything. And we are here as a community to try to make money and to beat the, the bookies and to have everybody go out there and cash tickets. We're always not going to agree. Sometimes we're going to you know, agree. Sometimes we're going to disagree. And it's always points to be made on each side until the fight happens. So whether you win or lose, we want to have conversations in here to handicap fights the best we can. But it was nice to see that our best bet play hit again. Again, we are 22 wins, 10 losses plus 18.78 units for the year. So that's the Bet Review Show. If you have not yet done so, do not forget to subscribe, like, head kick the bell icon, get involved with Fight Club TV, and I will see you on September 8th for UFC 228. And this is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV.